Hi, we are Baxu. Uh, I am Moises Lopez. I am CTO of Baxu. I, I, my favorite hobby is check performance issue with all about when a customer called you to to tell you the instance is so slow, then I start to work. And my name is Carlos Vasquez. Hi, good evening. Um, I, I'm in charge of, of operations at the Vauxhall, and um, I will be uh, helping here uh, Moises, who's the real expert in uh, performance issues uh, in, our, uh, in our team. So um, we'll be talking about uh, performance in live uh, servers, in live production servers. Not in staging servers, but in live servers. So um, let's, let's get to it. So um, what happens? There's a user who calls, who plays a ticket, and uh, they're, they're mad, they're angry, the system is down, the system is slow, they, they cannot invoice, they cannot uh, deliver, whatever. And uh, the thing is only happening on the production instance. So that's when things get ugly, <laughs> when you cannot reproduce. Then the first, the first question is, how can I fix it? Uh, where is the heavy process? How to reproduce? How to trace it? And the thing is that the production instance is not always the same, and is not always, uh, you know, like reproducible on a staging server. You, you can have the same uh, resources on the staging server, you can have the same database, you can have the same commit running, and still you cannot reproduce the issue. It's, it's common, it's, it happens. So um, even if it looks the same, if you cannot, after all uh, your efforts, reproduce the issue, it, it may be uh, necessary to run the testing and the performance uh, profiling on the production server. So it's not the same. It may look the same, but it's not the same. <laughs> the most important difference is the in test you don't have the most important uh, difference that is the users. Yeah, in production you have all the usher, uh, all usher uh, pressing the button. Tuk, 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 and that can break the, the auto instance. Uh, but if you can reproduce the step in a test staging auto instance, then you should use it in, instead of production. But there are a lot of other, other uh, issues. It's not easy to reproduce. OK. So five things you never should do on a production server uh, when, when profiling. First one, never reboot the Odoo instance. You will, uh, you will have the user uh, on a downtime. You will, you, you will maybe stop the, the performance issue for ha from happening um, because the, the performance issue may be related on a uh, long-lasting you know, process. So if you reboot, you don't have the performance anymore. You, you will have to wait for another couple of hours so it happen again. So do not reboot the server. Do not reboot the PostgreSQL server either. Um, never apply patches directly into production because they're not reproducible. They, it's, it's not healthy to profile that way. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> never do that. And. Uh, do not use high overload tools. If your profiling tools use a lot of resources, you will um, introduce a lot of noise into the system. And uh, never use tools without multi-worker uh, compatibility or support, because probably you will be running uh, audio in the multi-worker configuration in the production instance. So if your tools cannot profile several process, uh, um, inline processes like workers, it won't, it won't work. Then, what tools should we use? The first one is PG Badger. This is a, 
uh, un, re, get all database stats about the post, Postgres uh, log output and generates a, a, a format, a pretty format, uh, the office low queries or, or most query executing. The another tool is Pyflame about se uh, Python section. Yes, this is uh, this show you the is, is slow method in what line of code from Python. It may be a little bit tricky to uh, enable PG Badger uh, profiling into production, um, but it, it is it is uh, it is not that hard if you if you pre uh, set it up. So, what do you need to do to enable the profiling? Is you need to enable the full login capabilities of PostgreSQL in the configuration file. So you uh, usually you uncomment those lines in the configuration file. Then you reload your configuration, your Postgres configuration, without rebooting the Postgres. That's done with that uh, common sentence, the PG reload conf. And then uh, you can uh, pipe those logs into PG Badger to be analyzed. So that's the way you can enable or disable those uh, login to be uh, piped through PG Badger on, on, in a hot uh, environment. And the another tool, Pyflame, is profiling PID, uh, process ID of uh, Adobe process. Uh, and you will get a graph similar to this one. Uh, it does not require you to modify the source to start profiling, since it's uh, checking the trace, the trace about the process ID. Then you can start to trace all without restart, without apply uh, monkey patch, and you can enable in all workers. All workers has have a different PID, and you get a full trace of all methods. In this in this case, um, what is wrong here? Huh? There is no limit. That is one. Another. Is is not what? Yeah. Here. Yes, you. Uh, we, yes, we are using a uh, filter uh, with a computer field, and this is not stored in the database. Then you need to compute this field for all records, and this is over performance overkill. Yes. This is a weird case, but it was a real case. <laughs> then let's, let's do, show you how to enable Postgres SQL login and check the output, uh, the Postgres.log, and transfer the, the logs with PG Badger. And we will enable Pyflame in process ID in each worker, and we will get an, an readable format with flame graph. <laughs> Here, you can check the browser is loading, and the time is running faster here. <laughs> and the web page is now loading. Then I will enable the first part about PostgreSQL to enable the logs with this configuration. And we will reload the configuration. And now we will have out all the logs of Postgres. Here we have the process ID of each uh, uh, worker of other bin, and we start to trace the PID for one worker and so on.
Um, voila. We have uh, this report uh, running PG Badger report, and we will analyze. We have a lowest individual query. This is a no big deal, but this is a big deal. This kind of queries is running too many times and spending a lot of time. This is not big a deal. And we have a lot of another, other kind of reports and stats. Then we have a guilty here. Yeah. And the pipeline result is here. And we have the line of code with the problem. In this case, is this one. The longer uh, it is, the, the, uh, the, slow, the lo slower it is, okay? So it's yeah. uh, horizontal uh, length yes. is the time taken. Jen, let's, let's to open that line of code. Is this line, and we have a computer. In this guy, I remove that domain, and in this case, you, can, you, you need to deploy that chain, and now you are refreshing faster, and you have the, the result fine. Then it's faster. Then the performance issue was fixed in this case. In this case, it's a easy one, but there are a lot uh, is not so easy. That's the second part of fixing the performance issue. When, once you identify the performance issue, you can check if you have another way to have the same output, et cetera. No? Um, also, you should not, uh, you should not uh, manipulate the uh, production server through SSH in uh, production, right? So uh, for all this to work, you should uh, pre-set up everything and have uh, some way to auto deploy those changes into the logs and uh, the conf and reloading the, the Postgre um, logging system without entering uh, the terminal. It's way safer, it's way quicker, and uh, you can have multiple people doing the job without the risk of having uh, people entering, you know, like the, the SSH server with root access and everything. So uh, the way we do this is using deployv.net. Uh, it, it's a tool, it's a front-end tool who um, help us manage the, the servers, and we uh, built into deployv the capability of deploying, or of enable or disabling the profiling uh, methods we, we just uh, showed. But you should have something similar, you know, like uh, to, to enable and disable the profiling There's, a, there's another uh, common um, performance issue that we have uh, identified. Um, uh, and more so if you work in um, non-English speaking countries, in Spanish or uh, Portuguese speaking countries in Latin America, you have a lot of uh, servers and uh, machines set up with different locales, you know, like the environment variables. So when you install Postgres, you won't have the default C locale. So that can be a lot of pain in the indexing. Um, just uh, to, to show you, if, uh, you have, uh, if you have a select who's uh, throwing this uh, in, in the explain uh, sentence, it's throwing that it is doing a sequential scan. It is ignoring the index in Postgres. And that's a huge performance issue. So in this example, this select from the, from the attachment table, um, that I will help you to see, maybe. <laughs> um, you, can, you can have something like 100 uh, times the, the time. Again. There you go. Yeah, it's 
liquor. <laughs> it gets liquor. So. <laughs> Maybe I need to reboot my yeah. <laughs> computer. Slow the index. <laughs> we don't have developed a uh, tool to avoid to reboot things <laughs> to show the display. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have do you, do you have questions about uh, the things you already uh, you already talked? Questions about the profiling, enabling, introduction. Um, is it coming? It's because. Um, for example, if you have a team of developers, there you go. If you have a team of developers and uh, if they need to access the server in um, to SSH to enable profiling into production server, you possibly will not be able to delegate that work to all your all your development team because not everybody should have access to the root uh, user in the production servers. At least you need to be able to to run the the PG reload comp, and that's a pretty high uh, uh, permission. Yeah, so it's it's it, it, it's for security manners. Yeah, so if if you if you have a front end uh, which in, in which you can enable or disable the the feature, it's way better, way way better. So I was I was just saying that um, uh, this is an explain of a, a of a simple select. So in the first uh, in the first run, uh, Postgres is doing a sequential scan. So sequential scan means that Postgres is uh, looking through the table like manually without the index. So even though uh, Odoo makes the index and the index is present, uh, the the um, select is ignoring the index and it's uh, searching all the records. And that is taking 21 uh, milliseconds. 20, yeah, 20, 21,000 milliseconds. And um, that's a lot of time. Uh, for for a for a attachment table, it's a lot of time. Everything is in attachments. The, the CSS, the, the JavaScript, the images, everything is in, in the attachment table. So that's a huge piece of an issue. Um, but if you uh, activate the index, it uh, will do a, a very a pretty different uh, select, and it's just taking uh, a tenth of a second to do the same select. So what can uh, what can cause Postgres to not use the index? So a pretty common example is the locate. So when you have when you have a database which is not using the collate C and is using the collect I don't know if if uh, if the I don't know if Spanish or uh, I mean, I even the English one the the US the UTF-8 uh, collate is uh, going to be performance issue because Postgres will ignore the index. And um, we have a pretty good example here where uh, Moises uh, just encountered that problem. Uh, this is a, a PR in the, in the Odoo uh, repository. So uh, he encountered that problem and it's taken really, really uh, a long time to process and with the uh, attachment table, with a lot of attachments. So we did a test uh, test with uh, three million attachments, and it's crazy slow, crazy, crazy slow. It's unusable. Uh, in, in production, it's unusable. So um, he uh, made a PR, and uh, he reduced it to a thousand, a uh, tenth of a second. So it's, I don't know how many times faster. It's like 500 times faster, something like that. So um, the thing is that he didn't know it was the collate C. He, he did a fix. Uh, using the uh, gene index uh, in Postgres. But then, in the discussion, um, Olivier, Olivier Denis, the uh, big Jedi master, Olivier Denis, <laughs> is, did the test himself, and uh, without the, 
the patch that Moises uh, uploaded, he was able to reproduce the tenth of a second. So Olivier was like, I, I don't have the documentation, what are you talking about? And he wasn't able to reproduce the, with the same commit, with a demo database, the problem that Moises was running into. And that's just uh, the thing we were talking about. Even if, if it looks the same, it is not the same. And the difference after, uh, in the discussion, you will, you will see that the difference was that the collate was not uh, C in Moises' uh, database. It was some other collate, you know? And that was causing Postgres to skip the index and was doing all the difference in production. And if you have a performance issue in the attachment table, you will crash down the server. No, no other way around. So uh, everything, uh, everything was just caused by the collate of the database. Something really small, really, uh, really, really hard to find. Um, and then um, Moises changed his patch to um, to improve the database manager. You know, the, the the integrated database manager in Odoo. When you create a database uh, using the database manager, it now supports the collate C. But if you create the database using use command line, you do like a pg, uh, like a create db, create database, blah blah blah. In the common line, it will use your default collate on your environment variable. So if you deploy that way using a script, you risk having a collate different than C. So you risk encountering these problems with the index and have a lot of performance issue because of the of that. Um, the way you can uh, change the collate on an, on an existing database, on a production database, is this. You have to change the template first. So uh, your template is now using Collate. And then you have to create a new database and uh, re-upload all the data and structure on, the, on that database. There's not an easier way. There's not a one-line uh, command to do that. You have to recreate the database and re-upload the data to have the uh, Collate change. And that make, uh, make, makes all the difference in performance. Um, here is the same test on that commit running a couple of minutes ago on V13 with a Collate C database, the same that Moises did and took a thousand seconds to, to run and it's taking not a tenth of a second, it's taking 0 0.25 seconds. So uh, we are also um, faster because V13 is faster. <laughs> so it's not a tenth of a second anymore. So use, use Collate C if you're not uh, using an English-based um, server or machine, okay? That's another uh, pretty common performance issue. That's it. Uh, thank you guys for, for listening to us uh, today. Uh, if you have questions for us,